and we are now live. Hi and welcome to today's digital lunch talk here at The Great Journey. Today we have a special guest, we have Fredrik Bergström with us and today's topic is the demo scene. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to post your questions here in the YouTube chat. And we'll try to answer all the questions after Fredrik's presentation. And this presentation will be available here on the Great Journeys YouTube channel. And if you like today's talk, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And with that said, it's now time for Fredrik. Take it away, Fredrik. The scene is yours. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, yes, I'm going to talk today for you about uh, a little bit about what the demo scene is. Uh, might not. Uh, be very clear at the moment what it could be for you and what feature and perks you can get from it. And uh, I will be doing it in English, uh, but the direction or interest is mainly on the Swedish and, the Swedish and Nordic region of the demo scene, even if we will discuss some uh, European things as well. Uh, first, I thought I would actually start with showing something. Uh, so that you have some grasp of what we're doing. And I want to show a 4K intro called Drop by Tassadum that was released in 2014, a couple of years ago. Uh, and this is a four kilobyte intro. So it's one exafile of four kilobytes. So, uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, so uh, that uh, hopefully gives you an idea and uh, also quite cool uh, what you can do in four kilobytes of executable file. And I should have also mentioned that this was on the Windows platform um, uh, and more or less everything is made in, in shaders on the graphic card, but we'll come back to that later. So uh, a little bit of a presentation of me. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Fredrik Bergström. Uh, my alias in the demo scene is Fred. Uh, very uh, inventive. I live here in Karlstad with a Sambo and a cat. Uh, I grew up uh, just a couple of uh, kilometers from here in Ostentvik, outside of Sunne. And apart from computers, my main interest is uh, trains. I uh, work on some actual trains for hobby. And uh, I have a little bit of a liking of Formula One as well, but mainly computers. So 
this is my first computer. Uh, it is an uh, Amiga 2000. And we played a lot of games uh, at that point, of course. But my father had one rule. Uh, screen time was not really an, a question in the 90s. But the rule was that uh, half the time would need to be spent on creative work. He used his computer for, uh, as an artist. So we spent uh, a little bit less than half the time of doing graphics and uh, music and whatnot, um, which uh, gave me an uh, insight into that, well, digital art exists. And uh, it, that was quite interesting. This is my current Amiga and uh, been my Amiga for a long time. And if you don't know about Amiga, it is um, currently you would say it's a retro computer, but it had its great heyday in the 90s. Uh, but it, there still is a lot of following on that. And for me, this is a big part of the, the demo scene, even if there are um, a lot of other platforms and PC is uh, quite big on Windows and Linux as well. Uh, on this machine, I started my first PBS, uh, which at that point were, well, before the internet. So this was the way how to call other computers, talk to other people with the computer. And uh, my BBS allowed people to call me, and they could then upload things and download things from my machine. And I had just one phone line, but caller from all around Sweden. But it was a moderately small uh, bulletin board system for the time. I did some calling myself. That was the only chance of getting the latest hot stuff from um, uh, the Swedish scene at that point, but it, it amounted to around 2,000 Swedish crowns a month for a telephone bills. So that was a bit hefty, but well, to get the st status you wanted on the scene, then that was what was needed. And through this, I got my first contacts with the demo scene. We downloaded productions and uh, graphics and music and things like that, and uh, met the first people uh, that uh, I will talk more about later in this presentation. So these two computers, of course, are important to me. Uh, then to my work, I've been working uh, as a software developer for 20 years. I work at a company called Dice International, which um, started 2004. I was one of the co-founders. And it also has roots in the demo scene. The two people that founded the company with me were uh, had been active in the demo scene before. So that was where they got their interest. And actually, they did the first softwares and things like that on the Amiga uh, before we started this company. We develop a software as a service software for uh, digital signage or uh, in store retail, retail customer experience, which would be, well, screens in stores more or less to uh, assist and create a customer experience. We use PC Windows hardware, uh, shaders, and game, gaming technology to have a high performance, uh, high frame rate playback of content. We can do uh, video synchronization and things like that, uh, video walls and, and whatnot. And we work internationally uh, with partners all around the world. Uh, but we have our main development office here in Costa, where we are around nine people working with development and support. And uh, I can answer more questions about this later. But now I think it's time to move on to a little bit about the demo scene. So I wanted to do this presentation for a long time. And I was really happy when I got the chance to introduce this and the, the opportunity through the great journey to do this presentation. And uh, as the scene is really important to me, it's been a part of me for a long time. And then, of course, I started doing this presentation. And well, you stand, you stand in the shower and you like, oh, I, I really know how to explain this. It's so easy. I've, I have all the knowledge about um, this thing. And then you try to put it on paper. Not that easy. Uh, then even looking at the list of attendees on Facebook, seeing that a lot of people that I look up to were interested in watching. Uh, a lot of people actually knowing what the demo scene is. So making I can't really make this thing up. I need to actually say something that's worth something. It just It doesn't cut it to say that, well, you will get free candy and beer or something like that. 
So uh, if we look at Wikipedia, it says, yeah, an international computer art subculture. Yeah, it could be it. Or I could say that it's a forum for digital art. And that's a big, of course, art is a big part of it. It's uh, um, about computers and art in a lot of different ways. But is it really that for me? Uh, I think that for me, it's about love. Uh, it's about love for the computer uh, that I have, or the first computer in my case, it would be the Amiga. For other people, it would be other computers. It's the love of sharing your work, of learning something new on computers, of letting someone know that you love their work. Uh, it's the love for people that I have the honor to uh, know based on and through the demo scene. And also a lot about respect and recognition to get recognized about what you do. To be able to go, for example, to a demo party event and during the time of a weekend to actually show what you're capable of and getting the recognition through that. Um, I think that's a really big part of it. And also, I know that there is a lot of more space in the demo scene for creative people. And there is a lot of creative people out there that are eager to share their work, to learn, and to uh, spend the time on uh, exhibiting what, uh, what they are good at. So, well, this is personally what I feel about the demo scene. It doesn't really say what the demo scene is. Well, it surely doesn't. But for me personally, this is what I feel, what I think is important, and why I would say that this should be the first step in actually taking a look at this, because you can be a part of it. It's not, even if a lot of these people might look a little bit scary, they're not. They're very, very nice people, and they have a lot of things to share. So. Uh, we can start to actually talk about more technically what the demo scene is. Uh, I will just uh, say something about my group, um, a little bit more presentation. Uh, I'm part of a demo group called The Gang. We're based here in Värmland, and all our members are located here in Värmland at the moment. It started 1989, not really in Värmland, but that uh, uh, period ended 1992. Uh, and the demo group was a bit asleep until 2002 when we restarted it. And currently, we're four to five active members in the group and uh, some more inactive. And we're mainly focused on PC and Amiga platforms uh, and also focused on having a lot of fun. So, a little bit about the history. The demo scene started. Uh, with pirate gaming, more or less. Uh, this is a bit simplified, but let's say that you had a group and you did a crack of a game you wanted to show off. Uh, you wanted to show what your group name was, what your name was, what people you knew, uh, which bulletin board system to call to get in contact with you or to uh, supply you with new games and whatnot. And then, uh, of course, the intros grew and you wanted to show off with more cool effects and things like that. And from there, uh, there are also copy parties where you met up and copied games, spent time together, and that grew into having uh, intros um, where you would not have a game. It would not be a crack. It would only be the effect and you as a coder or graphician or musician showing off. Uh, this started more or less with the Commodore 64, but it grew onto the Amiga and the Atari and uh, later uh, PC as well, and a lot of other platforms, of course. In the end of the 80s and mid 90s was the heyday of the demo scene. There were then a lot of big demo parties, uh, thousands of visitors, a lot of prize money and prizes. Largest in Europe, uh, but also uh, it existed, of course, all over the world, which is still do today. Um, the competition was quite fierce at that point between the groups. A lot of the groups were in war with each other, and it was important to be elite or have a high status. So, and you got that through making really cool things or knowing the right people. 
So it wasn't uncommon for a demo party to have multiple levels where you were, as a lamer, you were only allowed into the lower level. And as uh, elite or higher status, you could go up to the next floor and spend time with the cool guys. From this, it grew to be less competitive, uh, I would say, in, in the sense of that you're, it's more accepting. Uh, so the demo scene now consists about a much more, much more love and um, respect, of course. Uh, also, a lot of the members that were active in that time is older now. Um, surprisingly. Um, I don't know if that has to do with the CRT monitors that we used at that point or uh, just that um, we got kids. Uh, yes, so uh, that very short history about the demo scene. Um, we can talk a little bit about groups. I already talked about the gang, my group. Uh, most people in the demo scene are organized in some kind of group. Uh, it's not a company, but it's just a collection of people that have a name for uh, their uh, kind. <laughs> uh, we, in our group, have developers for coders. We have graphicians, musicians, uh, maybe a designer, hopefully. Um, but there are a lot of different roles uh, in the different demo groups. Uh, I will now do some name dropping just to connect this with this, uh, the gaming uh, world. So a lot of the groups that were big or are big in the demo scene also have connections into gaming, of course. Um, I have, for example, uh, Future Crew, which is a Finnish group or were a Finnish group that uh, spawned Remedy Games, uh, known from Max Payne and Alan Wake, for example. We have uh, the Black Lotus, uh, where developers there uh, uh, have worked in digital illusions now. I think uh, Calms, who was a uh, coder on um, a lot of the Battlefield games, moved on to have their own studio called Fall Damage. Um, and we have Fairlight also with people working in digital illusions. A uh, lot of their developers uh, went on to start uh, Wild Games, which is a new uh, studio in Stockholm quite recently. We have uh, the Silence uh, that uh, started the Team 17, which are known for Worms, for example, and a lot of other uh, games. So, and also the demo you saw in the beginning from Tassadum, uh, their developers uh, work or worked at King, and also several other groups like Panda Design have had developers working at King and other uh, gaming companies. So the the ties are quite quite well and it might be because it's quite similar you work with graphics music and coding and it should be real-time high quality uh, graphics code so not that uh, surprising then uh, we have demo parties and the demo party is an uh, important part of the demo scene of course this is where you go to meet up where you go to compete uh, you could compare it as a festival or a convent or a LAN party uh, might be the closest one. The difference would be that we do not uh, play games. We spend that time uh, doing other things. Uh, mainly we spend the time together. Uh, maybe there is a beer or some food involved. Uh, we do either development at a party or you do that uh, before. Uh, there would be seminars, for example, uh, similar to this, maybe a little bit better. And um, also one important thing is that there uh, would be employees or other parts of the demo scene or members of the demo scene that are working at gaming companies that would scout for, low, for talent. So that's uh, for me as someone, well, if I were to say one thing uh, to a, an upcoming developer, I would say that it's a good place to meet up and make contact in the demo scene, either for looking for work or for getting a resume or for uh, just uh, getting the contact. Different parts will have different directions and different platforms. And uh, this year, of course, a lot of the parts will be online instead of uh, in person. So this were, is where the demo parties coming from, up from now would have been if uh, we didn't have this uh, interesting situation. Um, the good thing is that since they are online, they are more accessible. So even if you didn't have the time to go to Denmark, 
then it might be, or Finland, then it might be that you could actually uh, be a part of this uh, online instead. Some of the par parties, I just go through a little very quickly. A few of the Swedish and Nordic parties, uh, uh, or European parties, I should say. We have GERP, uh, which is an Amiga party in Shrevde. It's It was this uh, spring, and uh, I attended, it was very nice. We have uh, Revision, which is the, one of the larger parties in Germany. Um, it catered for most platforms. Uh, this was held online now in Easter this year. Uh, Birdie, which is also a LAN party, was held uh, last week in Uppsala. Uh, and then upcoming parties, we have Goob Data, which is uh, um, Commodore 64, mainly uh, Commodore 64 party in the south of Sweden. We have uh, Edison, which is a multi-platform party in Stockholm coming up this summer. Uh, I would say that if you're in the, if you're available online at that point, that would be an interesting thing to watch. Also, Solskogen, which is in Norway, that's also a multi-platform party. Tersak, which is a multi-platform party in Denmark. And also that will be run together with Assembly this year. And Assembly is a demo scene party and LAN party based in uh, Finland, as you might already know. So both of these parts will be running at the same time and having shared composites, it seems, since they are now doing it online and not uh, in person. And I think the date is October at this point. We will see how that turns out. And you can attend to parties now online and actually do something. Uh, at, or you could just be a sofa singer and spend your time in the sofa just watching, which is also uh, valid. So uh, a little bit about Compos. Uh, this is, of course, the highlight of any demo party. The Compo blocks or competitions usually are at the end of Friday or Saturday if it's a weekend party. And the interesting thing, I think, is that most people at the party will look at the Compos. And uh, we uh, vote during the compost or after the compost. So uh, also, this is where I am, uh, just to point out that I was at, this is from revision in uh, Germany last year. And um, it seems that I'm also enjoying the competitions. So um, why compete? in the competitions. And I'll come to what you can compete in uh, soon, but uh, it is a really good feeling to show off your work. Uh, you show it in front of all the visitors. You uh, can do it a, a lot of reasons, like uh, getting your computer to do something that was not possible or that was hard to do. Uh, you can use it in your portfolio later if you want to show off what you did. Uh, you can use it to get feedback from other visitors or other people watching, or just for a show off or for fun, uh, of course. Um, usually we call the things that you put in in the competitions as releases, and they can be created at the party or prepared uh, by your group in advance. Um, some groups spend years or months making their uh, entries, uh, which is quite cool. So what can you compete in? This will be a long list, but I'll try to go through it a little bit quick, quickly. So we have streaming music, normal music uh, made digitally uh, in some way. So, uh, and with all parties, there will be some kind of rule. It might be the rule is the maximum length of the music or something like that. But in general, for streaming music, it would be an MP3 or OG file with the music that you made. Uh, then there are other music formats, for example, tracked music, which would be uh, a more of a re retro format, popular on Amiga uh, and Atari and similar platforms. Uh, you have samples playing in patterns with, and the limitations usually is that you have in this case, this example, you have four patterns, which means that you can have ma maximum four samples at the same time. Uh, they are usually smaller in size, of course, than a streaming. Uh, music entry. We have old school, which would be on other platforms like Commodore or NES, uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, or similar platforms where you have not the same kind of music sound chips. Maybe you cannot play samples. You can only play like sound effects or waveforms in different, uh, different ways. 
can require require a lot of effort to uh, uh, some technical effort to make something rather than um, just uh, playing something. I'm not a musician, so I have no idea uh, how you do it, anyways. Uh, then we have a modern graphic or graphics. Uh, so this would be yeah any graphic you can do on your computer, drawn, 3D rendered, whatnot. Uh, no real limitations, usually quite high resolution, as much color as you can get in. Uh, there might also be a photo category, but uh, that would be a separate thing. We have old school, which is, well, you could refer it as pixel graphics, where you then work with a lower uh, capacity platform. Uh, limited resolution, limited amount of colors. Maybe you only have eight or 16 colors to, to play with. And then you need to cater that um, when you make your image. It might also be that some of the platforms are technically demanding, like Commodore 64 does not, might not allow you to put more than four colors in each character square or something like that. So you really need to, to plan ahead. Uh, and it's interesting when it comes to the limited platforms because a lot of graphicians or musicians or coders that are normally working with the high-end platforms, it might be a completely different challenge to actually work with a low-end platform and something that gives you a lot of feedback. So executable graphics, you know, I think this is fun. Uh, this is a 4K executable similar in size to the, the intro we saw at the beginning. Uh, and uh, then uh, when it comes to uh, executable files, this needs to be one executable file of four kilobytes that produces this image in full HD in this case. And that's referred to as size coding uh, to uh, put in compression shaders, things like that to do this. Uh, the fun, fun thing about this image is made by a guy called IQ that, uh, and you might see that he got his inspiration from his work. He got. He was a part of a team that got an Oscar for best visual effects for the movie Brave uh, a couple of years ago. And the eyes might have some resemblance to some of those uh, animated movies. So that's, that's quite fun. And this was the winner of the competition in the Russian this year online. So, um, and one of the best examples, I think, of this. Then coding. So this brings. Um, uh, the ability then for coders to show off. Uh, this is a little bit obscure with Amos Coding Competition, which is a programming language on the Amiga. But you have two people that are coding next to each other, and you have the crowd. In this case, you will see how accelerated they are in uploading. Uh, maybe not at this point. Um, but this might be better. So here is from Germany a couple of years ago, Shader Showdown, which is shader coding live with a DJ playing music. And this really lets the coders show off what they're capable of. And there is a time limit. They have 25 minutes to create something. And then the crowd will cheer, which is the best one. And then you move on up the ladder. And uh, it's quite popular. And you would also have, for example, commentators commenting on while they write in the code what they're doing and such. Uh, so that's a really fun thing to watch. And I'll come back with some tips about that later. And now the main part, the intro and demo. So um, this is where you can bring all of it together. So you take the graphics, the music, and the coding, and you make something with it. Uh, intro is size limited. Usually, it should be one file. So you might have 256 bytes executable file, file, four kilobytes executable, or 64K executable, or 64 kilobytes executable. Uh, and it should be a self-contained executable file without any references. Uh, it might contain music, uh, generated graphics, uh, but music would probably come from a software synthesizer, as you will not have space for actual uh, music or samples or similar in the, the file. And I recommend looking this up, because there is a lot of really cool things made in, in this. Uh, and actually, this Gaia Machina we will take a look at a little bit later as well. Uh, demo is less uh, limitation on size. Uh, you are free to use uh, several megabytes of size for your demo, usually. But 
Instead, it could be the platform limitations. So this is an Amiga, Amiga demo uh, from 2009, and um, it uh, then can use a lot of more textures and uh, music and things like that. But the, the thing here would be the technical achievement of getting it to work or getting the effects you want to do what you want. Um, and you can either do that, or you could tell a story with your demo, or both, of course. But uh, there are, well, no real uh, time limit on this. So even an intro uh, can be quite long, and a demo can also be quite long. It might be that the, the, in the competition, they will cut it uh, after 10 minutes, or uh, there might be some specific limit, but um, yeah. Then, of course, in as a story, you could use humor. Um, this is uh, a demo from Re Revision last year. And it might not have the really more, um, well, the effects that are most achieving, but it will um, be enough with the humor. Um, and, but the important part with the demo is that it's execut executable. It is real-time effects. So it's not a video. It's something that you make in code on the actual hardware. If you want to do an animation, that would be a separate compo, which is also uh, possible. And it should show what you can do with this platform or this uh, hardware. Then other, um, there are some other things. If you're not into any of these things, you could go for a 5k run, uh, five kilometer run at revision or some other parties with or without the uh, beer and schnapps break at half time. Uh, you could have wild that is more or less you can put in whatever release you want uh, and a video of you going in by car to the party. Uh, don't do that. Or uh, yeah, uh, a video of some obscure platform of or you getting the street lights to to flash in cool rhythms or whatnot. Um, also, throwing hardware competitions, tips around that, quiz, uh, melody quiz, lingo and whatnot. Uh, these are all parts of some of the demo scene parties around uh, Sweden and, and Nordic countries. And I thought that we would now take a quick break and show uh, Gaia Machina by Approximate, some of my friends from Stockholm. Uh, this is a PC 64K intro, so it's all in 64 kilobytes and was released in revision 2012.
yes, I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, Gaia Machina by Approximate. Uh, and yeah, 64 kilobytes is also something where you can fit quite a lot of things in. Um, and this was, uh, as I said, first place at Revision 2012, which was uh, really, really cool. Yes, so let's move on. We move on to uh, recognition. Uh, after the compost and the voting, you will have the prize giving. And this is uh, an important part because it is recognition from all the people at the party, all the competitors that you competed against, all the visitors. So everyone will ship in with what they think and you will together vote the best uh, entry for the different competitions. So, and there will of course be one for each of the competitions. So you have the Amiga demo or the PC demo or the 64K or the 4K and so on and so on. It takes a long time, but it is highly appreciated. And this is the way um, to share the love, to letting someone know that you love their work, giving them the recognition that they deserve and uh, a lot of hugs and applause from the, the, the crowd. Um, and of course, prizes. You will probably get a plaque or a diploma. Uh, on the bigger parties, there will be some prize money and, and so on and so on. Uh, but the most I, important thing, thing, I think, is actually learning that people like what you do. Uh, it's quite exhilarating. So, uh, and that's more or less the last part of what you do at the demo scene, then everyone travels home. Um, uh, but we need to have some greetings. You have that always in the demo scene production. So I would like to greet all these people. I will not speak all the names, but feel yourself greeted. And then I want to do some adverts. Uh, we have a demo Earl group in Costa where we meet for a demo beer. Um, Sometimes next time will probably be online, as we've not met in some uh, a couple of months now. But uh, if uh, you're really welcome to join, if you're located in Costa, and we will then you will get, then get notifications when we are uh, doing something. Uh, also, we have Demos and Clubben in Stockholm. This will also be online uh, next Monday, uh, so you will be able to see it on Twitch. Uh, and it will be a demo scene, scene show, uh, discussions and things like that. Highly recommended. Then uh, on Twitch also, you, there is a lot of people to follow for live coding. Nusan is one. Flopin is highly recommended. Uh, also, where you can then see really cool stuff ma being made and them explaining how they make it and why and all of that. And this is something that I highly recommend. And then they will probably work in a tool similar to Shade the Toy, which is a cross-browser online uh, WebGL editor where you can write code directly and see the results directly into the browser. It's a good way of playing with shaders, and it's a good way to uh, play with uh, coding if you want to. And then uh, last, let's see. Oh, yeah, some credits. So, yeah. this presentation was me, made by me, Fred, and with the help of Shaki, Guaf, and Nisse. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of help from Leia, uh, my Norwegian friend, that make, made sure that this presentation wasn't totally uh, rambling about things that wasn't important and uh, made me delete uh, about 20% uh, of the slides uh, so that it actually fits in the time I have. So thank you so much to all of you helping with this and thank you so much to uh, the great unit for having me and with this i would like to end with another demo this is uh, not an intro it's a demo on the amiga called jesus christ motorcross by two groups nature and tractor and it won first prize in breakpoint 2009 so uh, more than 10 years ago
Okay, wow. Thank you, Frederick, for this great presentation. Uh, it's really interesting to see and all the connections to the uh, from the DMC into the video game industry and so on. Uh, thank you. Uh, we've got some questions here. Uh, one is, what is the biggest challenge to keep the demos lightweight? Yeah, any? Well, I think that. Yes. Uh, well, I think that the main, well, the, the challenge. There is a lot of challenges, but uh, of course, it comes down either to compression or recursion. So you might use fractals or some recur recursion. So, for example, the music might use the same code that the graphics uses, so that the samples and the waveforms in the music might be the same as the samples you use in the the graphics or in the code. Uh, also, shaders is a good way to make it lightweight because shaders describe a lot of things in very small mathematics, and you can uh, also compress shaders quite well, as uh, you write it in text. But the text, the variable names can be the same as things in the header of the .exe file, for example. So mm -hmm. you can then compress it very heavily. So yeah, that's uh, and there is a lot of really good uh, seminars and also. Um, blog entries about how to do really cool size coding, uh, mm. both on uh, on really small formats, like 256 bytes, and also bigger, like 4K and 64K. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I also have a question uh, from me. Uh, I saw a picture here on your Amiga. It was a purple one. Did Amiga uh, release a purple version, or did you do a cool paint job? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they. Since all of this was um, out of, uh, well, not made in the factory for uh, since like the 90s, there has been reproductions. So uh, mm -hmm. there was a company in, or a guy in Singapore that made new shells for uh, the 1200. Mm -hmm. So, and they came in a lot of different colors. Cool. Um, and I'm still waiting for the keyboard, which should be purple, uh, that would mm -hmm. arrive in a year or something like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, well, I think that's it for today. Thank you for a great presentation. Super interesting. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. And if anyone wants to continue to discuss the demo scene, Fredrik had gave some uh, great tips on how to connect to the demo scene. And if you want to talk about coding or game making in general, make sure to check out the Great Journey Discord channel. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. <laughs>